Good morning. I am Melanie Misick. I think I've met most of you or at least passed this part of your face recently. Um, but I'm the school director for uh, Resurrection Lutheran School Preschool and Child Development Center. I have been here for about a year. Um, a couple weeks ago, you heard from Gerald, who's our school board president, and um, he talked to you about how we are indeed using the CDC as um, such a great outreach to the community um, by making the choice to stay open during these unprecedented times. And I just wanted to go a little bit more in detail today and um, give some examples on how you can be a part of um, this great outreach with us and some of the people that we are impacting. So, um, some of the ways that you can get involved, um, you've seen some of them in the blast, but I'm going to give you some other ideas today. Some things we could immediately start doing, and some things we've got to be a little bit more future-minded, as we know we're not having special events and some of the same programs that we normally would. Um, and some of you have already started doing these things, which is really great. So we are looking for greeters um, to welcome parents and welcome families as they arrive to drop off their kids or pick up those kids. So that's during our business hours from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And um, if you happen to be there during one of these times, you might get to push one of these awesome strollers for six. We also have one for two if that's a little too big um, or a little too speedy for you, but it's full of usually happy babies. Um, Denny's done it if you want firsthand explanation on how fun it is, and it's definitely a good workout. But um, yeah, see, look, she's saying it's good. I didn't even pay her for that, that's great. Um, but we do that nightly, whether it's outside or walking around the building just to give them a change of scenery, and they really like that. So you could take uh, my evening uh, shift of that if you wanted to do that, or if you just wanna sit at the desk and kind of screen phone calls for us, that's great too. It allows us to be um, on the floor. Um, if you are not available 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., because I know you have lives outside of here, that's fine too. We have other things that you can do. Um, we have a lot of data entry. We're trying to get up with current times and get everything computer-based, so that's something that you can do from here. I can meet you on a weekend, or we can arrange an after-hour time for you to do something. Um, also, we're doing like Sam's orders and Walmart orders. If somebody would be willing to pick those up, um, we'll have people that can unload it here so you don't have to do any of the manual labor part. Um, another thing is just writing welcome letters to the families. We just started the school year, so just writing them a letter, thanking them for choosing our program, letting them know that we're praying for them, um, and just in general praying for them, including them and their kids in your daily prayers. Um, they are part of our family, even if they're not here worshiping with us. They're part of the Resurrection family, and we want to make sure that we've got prayerful hearts for them. A little bit um, further down the road, um, like if we are able to do a Christmas program or if we're able to do something for Thanksgiving, we would love help um, maybe decorating for those, um, if there's any type of food service going on at those, or just attending them. Um, I would allow mystery readers, if that sparks any of your interest, um, you would have to be masked, but to come into the room and read a theme-related story to the kids or partake in their Bible um, lesson. And then once we get to the point of doing chapel, which would be back in here, we'd love to have um, people join for that once you know things are a little bit more lifted. Um, the people that we are making an impact on numbers-wise, um, I'll just quickly go through this. We have 20 staff members. I think a lot of the time when we think about who we're impacting, we think first about the kids and families. I just want to make sure those staff members are included. Whether they were specifically looking to work in a Christian environment, that's where they ended up. So we've got the chance to impact their lives daily as well. Um, 81 students, so we're at capacity. Um, that's the most we've had from what I hear in a long time. Um, and that's 68 families, so we've got some sets of siblings here. But we're totally full. Um, we have, well, when I wrote this, there were two vacancies in infant and toddlers. Now we've got two starting tomorrow. So we're totally full. We have a waiting list for all of our rooms. Um, and to, to kind of help um, even more families, we are trying to get our occupancy expanded. Um, the need is still out there. And, you know, we don't want to um, turn anybody away if we can just 
go through some paperwork and um, get our license expanded so that we can help more families. That's our goal. Um, in my opinion, and I hope that you guys share it with me, because we expanded to include um, even the youngest ages, and you know, this year we are including some school agers as well, but we're really given the opportunity of, the li of a lifetime. Um, not only are we helping with their educational background, their fine motor literacy, social emotional, math, science, and that, but we have, um, for some of them, the first opportunity to share the Bible, to share God's love, to share God's word. We're, ha we're seeing families and kiddos with as young as a six week old. So we really may be that first impression that they get of what Christian love looks like. And um, that's an opportunity that, you know, they don't, they don't get um, a second chance at um, being that first person that may be witness to them. So I take that very seriously. Um, I look forward to finding those moments throughout the day that I can talk to the kids about um, just the love of Christ and that we're forgiven and that we should be loving each other. And um, little things like that they take home. I mean, we're starting at such a basic level, praying over meals, things like that, but it grows throughout the years that they're with us. And by expanding the program, that's one thing that we get to see. We get to see as they grow through our program, they get to grow in their faith. And, um, you know, that's an opportunity we were missing out on before. So I just am so happy that, that we decided to go that younger um, direction. A couple weeks ago, Harley had asked us, one of our elders had asked, um, if resurrection didn't exist, would anybody notice? So I'm going to copy him and kind of ask the same question. If the school didn't exist, would anyone notice? Um, yes is my answer, especially because of all, um, you know, the time, effort, volunteer hours that have gone in, the funding. Um, we've really transformed this place into much more than just a building. It's a beautiful building, but because of the changes we made, we're able to impact people in such a different way. And these next couple slides are people that I think would really miss us if um, we weren't here. Like this little friend who loves food time and starts praying as soon as the lunch trays come in the room. And you know, that's a habit that, that we've learned from her. So there she is joyfully with almost an empty plate, probably asking for seconds. Um, this little friend that wouldn't have been here before if we hadn't done infant and toddlers, who's doing sensory in exploration in the ball pit. This little guy who's in our um, K1 co-op class who climbs that mountain every day and either howls like a wolf or tells everybody that he's king of the mountain. Um, and our school age program in general, I mean, these kids have all become best friends in like a matter of weeks. They're running around out there daily. Um, babies are being rocked to sleep while their moms have to work or telework from home. Um, I put my own son in there. <laughs> He's out there smiling. But, um, you know, we decided to just embrace these different learning opportunities that some programs choose to, chose to say no to this year. And it's just paying off in a big way. You can, these families are just saying verbally how thankful they are. And I'm getting emails and texts over the weekend that their kids are excited to come to school. And, you know, they don't want their kids to go back to the public school because they don't know what that's going to look like. Here, at least, they have assurance that day to day they know what's going to be happening. We're allowing children to still be able to develop socially when the rest of us are social distancing. And that's so important that they know how to interact and show care and giving towards others, and they're able to learn that here in such a strange time. Um, in our older kids, we can just see them being confident in who God made them to be, and they're able to vocalize that. Um, this past week, they were learning the Lord's Prayer, and um, you know they're doing the different Bible stories, and even some of the school-agers are hearing that for the first time, and we would have missed out on that. Um, we're just able to give kids different exploration opportunities that if they were at home, only at home, they wouldn't be getting. And there's a, bi a Bible time in our um, school age class that's in the youth room right now. Um, and a couple just important things, you know, we do have some kids that really need us. Um, we are providing them maybe the healthiest meals that they can have during the week. Um, and we've got a wonderful cook. We've got um, we're getting government funding now for some of our food, and we're able to send some kids home with food if they need it. They're not missing meals while they're here. Stuff like that is just so important. Um, and then just teaching them through that interaction with the other kids to give and care for others. Um, you know, they don't get that if they're 
in a classroom of only three kids or learning through a screen or different things like that. So I just know this was such a great choice for us to do. Um, I really encourage you to find a way that, you know, calls to you that is pressing on your heart to get involved. If nothing that I mentioned, you know, is screaming your name, let me know a way that you think you could help, and I'm sure we can fit you in somewhere, but I would love for everybody to find a way to be involved in the school. Um, I'm so proud that we voted for the school to be our primary ministry, and I'm just excited to watch that change over this next year. Um, even it's, though it's gonna look a little differently and we won't necessarily be working hand-to-hand -hand together, we're gonna be working heart-to-heart -to -heart together, and that's so great, and we're gonna just keep impacting so many lives. Um, we're one year in with me and we're about to be along many years in together with our new um, mission as a church and I just know that we are doing what we're supposed to be doing for his kingdom and for his children and we've been blessed beyond belief in what we've been able to accomplish in a year and I thank you guys and the families thank you too. So thank you.